It's the Daily Dog. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. I am thankful that you are hanging out with me today because, my friends, I think I have a good one for us today. For the first time in quite a while, we are returning to music by the band Radiohead, and I am excited about it. Uh, I have had this particular song, Paranoid Android, on the list for quite a while. And lately, the drum beat for, hey, we need more Radiohead on the channel, has been building. And so I definitely wanted to get to this song today, and I'm glad that you are here. Uh, Paranoid Android is the lead single from the album OK Computer, uh, Radiohead's third studio album released back in 1997. The lyrics in this album allude to society's overall pull towards um, in, in their perspective, com consumerism, alienation, uh, socially, uh, emotionally, um, isolation, the, and, and the inability for us to have some political inroads to help these things and to help people in our society move forward. The album received critical and popular acclaim. It won a Grammy for Best Alternative Music Album in 1998. And in 2014, y'all, the Library of Congress included it in the National Re Recording Registry because it's culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant. So there you go. Uh, I found some more interesting stuff about this. Tom York uh, said that the band drew on uh, lots of different um, inspiration and different artists and sounds uh, as they were building the soundscapes and the style of songwriting for this, especially Bitches Brew by Miles Davis uh, with that avant-garde sort of style to uh, the, the fusion that uh, Miles brought to that particular album. Uh, the title of the album and the song of the album are both inspired by characters and sayings from Hitchhiker's Guide to the galaxy, especially the uh, the character Marvin, the paranoid android, the ship's robot. And uh, and so, y'all, we get uh, Tom York on vocals and uh, guitar, Johnny Greenwood on a, uh, sorry, electric guitar, Rhodes electric piano and synths. Ed O'Brien is on guitar, sound effects, percussion and backing vocals. Colin Greenwood is on bass and percussion and Philip Selway is on drums and percussion. So let us dive in, y'all. I'm going to be using the original studio recording to this. Actually, no, I am using the remastered uh, studio recording for Paranoid Android. And let's dive in, y'all. It goes something like this. Here we go. I like that percussion. Harmonically, they're all over the place already. I'm going to see if I can figure it out. Listen to his... His vocal color is so unique. What's that? He's asking. They set up these dominants and they don't go where they should. <laughs> okay, that's G minor. And that's E minor. So that's a chromatic third. Or they're using G Dorian. Yeah. That raised six. And there's down to C. Flat. It resolves back up by step to G. Where's that E minor chord? Pretty much in G. Down by step. Down by half step. And that's an E dominant seventh chord. 
goes to A, finally. So they're in a new area now. Now they're changing to seven. Y'all, hang on a second. This is going by way quickly <laughs> because they're into a different section altogether. So let me see if I can back up uh, and, and catch what was happening here. Uh, the first voice uh, verse, please, could you stop the noise? I'm trying to get some rest from all the unborn chicken voices in my head. Darn. Uh, and then it goes, when I am king, you will f be first against the wall. What's uh, with your opinion, which is of no consequence at all. And then the questions, what's that? What's that? Um, that goes to the paranoid. <laughs> what's that? Huh? But there's something out to get me, right? So if this is analogous to Marvin, the robot, the paranoid Android from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, as I recall, Marvin is often uh, depressed or <laughs> yeah, depressed, I think is a good word because his potential is not being fully utilized. He is intelligent. Um, but, uh, he's, uh, stuck doing uh, these menial tasks and he's like, I'm not fully realizing my potential. And I think that that's what Tom is identifying with just feeling, um, uh, depressed and uh, alienated and apart from the world that he sees and observes. And in this second verse, when I am king, you will be first against the wall, you know, is he's uh, uh, escaping into his imagination to try to find some uh, contentment, maybe. And then they go into this next section. I'm going to back up a little bit, y'all, and see if I can catch it here. Uh, I'll start there. <laughs> Seven. So ambition makes you look pretty ugly. Kicking, squealing, Gucci, little piggy. So that's a condemnation of the materialistic lifestyle that he sees, where uh, money and power are elevated priorities. a flat. section a third different section descending baseline to D. Just late. Rain down, rain down, come on, rain down on me. That's five of five in my head. To five, and it's not going to go there. Um, it goes a step lower than it should. It goes to C instead of D. It goes back down to A. And then he goes to D. Huh. I love this slower section. It's a prayer. 
It's a petition. It's a weird harmonic move to set up that 2-5 in D and then just go to C minor instead. Before they move to D minor, that's interesting to me. God loves his children. Yeah. Different section. Three, four, five, six, seven. Reminds me of the previous section. Get that toggle between C and A and A flat. That's a heck of a song, y'all. There's a lot going on in there. And I think I got some of it. Um, wow. You know, like I said in the, um, in the intro, I am not very well-versed in all of Radiohead's library. Yet every time I dive into one of their songs or some of their art, I find true inspiration and... Um, uniqueness and uh, uniqueness of perspective, uniqueness of the way that they're writing their songs. That chord progression was interesting, y'all. Not standard. There were standard portions of it, but then they went to different places than I was expecting, different places than functional tonality dictates that they go. And uh, maybe that's part of the activism in the song, it's like, yes, yes, I know that you want, that society wants me to do this, and I know that the people that are in power want me to do this, but I'm going to go this way, and you're going to have to live with it. You know, it's, uh, that could be it, but in this last section, rain down, rain down, come on, rain down on me from a great height, rain down on me. He is seeking salvation, um, peace, peace of mind, uh, the freedom to be himself despite the world around him, maybe, and maybe uh, seeking the courage to make it a reality instead of living in the reality that he's observing and living through. Because remember, uh, like I said here at the beginning, this is um, alluding to what they see in the late 90s as a pull towards consumerism and us becoming isolated from each other, even though the technology is starting to bring us into what's uh, what we think is more connectivity. And 20 something years later, we're still dealing with that dichotomy, right? Is that we have all of this technology that brings us together, but we still feel alienated and separated from society, especially when we see things happening in our world that we can't make sense of that they were like why is that going on you know this is a a continuing theme it seems like in some of the recent songs that we've looked at but uh wow uh that song from radiohead in the late 90s still just as relevant and um important for us to listen to and heed today i think so wonderful stuff uh y'all we'll try to get some more radiohead in the mix uh they are a very uh fascinating band i actually got the chance to see them play live in a weird context several years ago my wife and i megan and i were at uh, a taping of the colbert rapport stephen colbert's old show on comedy central and the day we were there the day we had tickets just happened to be when Radiohead was there. And we got to hear Radiohead play like six songs in a small little studio. And it was wonderful. They're so cool. And they're, um, I remember just the way that they conducted themselves in the interview was, uh, was really interesting. And I was made better for it. It's, they're a great band. And I need to get into some more of their stuff as I have time. 
But I think that's all for today, y'all. I thank you for being with me. This has been fun. We will get to some more Radiohead in the future. But uh, like I said, that's, that's it for today, I think. And we will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.